Welcome to the Rig Inform YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to show you how we make bacon out of fresh pork belly. Curing meat uses a formula rather than a recipe. Curing salt number one, also known as pink salt, Instacure number one, prog powder number one, or sodium nitrite, makes up a quarter of a percent of the weight of the meat, and salt is two and a half percent of the total weight of the meat. Our piece of pork belly miraculously weighed a thousand grams, so the math was super simple. In the past, sodium nitrite had a bad reputation. Many scientific studies have not only proven that it's safe, but it's actually essential to prevent botulism and many other foodborne pathogens in our food supply. There's so little of it used in this batch of bacon. Take a look for yourself. After unnecessarily transferring it into a different bowl, we weighed out 25 grams of kosher salt. 12 and a half grams of dark brown sugar was added for a little sweetness. Aside from the curing salt and regular salt, you can add whatever additional ingredients you want in any quantity as long as they don't contain salt. Once your cure has been blended, sprinkle about half onto one side of the belly and massage it into the meat. Flip it over and add most of the remaining cure and rub it into that side. Use the rest to coat the sides and make sure you get all of that cure that fell onto your work surface. For best results, vacuum seal your meat. You can use a zip top bag and remove as much air as possible if that's your only option. It's important that any liquid that comes out during the curing process makes constant contact with the meat. Now that it's sealed, we'll put it in the fridge for a week. Every day we'll flip it over to ensure the cure penetrates both sides evenly. On the seventh day, pull out your fully cured bacon and bring it to the sink. Take it out of the bag and thoroughly rinse the bacon with cold water. You can also submerge it for 30 minutes if you don't want your bacon to be very salty. Make sure you pat it dry with paper towels when you pull it out of the water. Technically, this bacon is ready to slice, fry, and enjoy, but we're going to smoke our bacon to add flavor and bring it to a temperature that makes it 100% safe to consume. To prep it for the smoker, put on a wire rack over a sheet tray and into the fridge for at least four hours, but overnight is preferable. The next day, get your smoker set to 180 degrees Fahrenheit or 82 degrees Celsius. We use our Traeger pellet grill to ensure a consistent smoking temperature throughout the cook without having to mess with dampers and airflow on our Kamado charcoal grill. We decided to take full advantage of the smoke that'll be trapped in the grill to cook a piece of fresh pork belly for dinner that night. We used the built-in thermometer on the Traeger to temp the bacon and our meter wireless thermometer on the pork belly. With the bacon, you don't want to put the probe in this way you'll end up with a hole in half of your slices if you do that. Insert it this way, and the hole made by the probe won't be noticeable at all when you slice it. The meter probe is inserted as well, because the two pieces will cook slightly differently because of the shape and size, as well as the fact that the fresh pork belly wasn't cured. Don't forget to turn on super smoke mode if you have it! We place the meats on the top rack to keep them away from the heat source at the bottom, and because we put a pan of baked beans under the pork belly later in the day to catch all of those delicious drippings. The meter wireless thermometer is awesome. You use your smartphone or tablet to input the type of meat you're cooking and the target internal temperature. It also keeps up with the temperature of your grill or oven and uses the data to give you an estimated time it will be finished. Check out the link in the video description below if you're interested in getting this incredible tool. We love ours and use it all the time. Although the meter probe was in the fresh pork belly, it gave us a close approximation of what the bacon temperature was. Our target for the bacon is 150 degrees Fahrenheit or 66 degrees Celsius. After 2 hours and 45 minutes, we went outside to check on the internal temperature of the bacon. A few degrees over isn't a big deal. You're next, piggies! Yum! This smelled incredible! Remove the bacon from the smoker and put it onto a tray to bring inside to cool down. It would have cooled faster outside on this cold January afternoon, but that's not the safest place to keep bacon unattended, especially if you have hungry neighbors. Time to turn off Super Smoke and crank the temperature up to 275. Once the bacon is cooled down to about 80 degrees, wrap it tightly with plastic wrap and put it into the fridge until it's completely cooled. Whenever you're almost ready for bacon, put it in the freezer for about an hour to firm up a little. That will make it much easier to slice. The best way to get even slices is with a deli slicer. We don't have one, and you probably don't either. We use our Victorinox slicing knife. This is the perfect knife for getting beautiful slices of bacon or any other meat that you might want to carve without having unsightly hack marks. 
You want to make long, even strokes without lifting the knife until completing the cut. We started off by cutting some super thick slices, and then we switched over to some thinner slices that are close to a standard thick cut baking you'd find at the store. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? You can always cut off some of the top layer of fat at the very beginning of this process before weighing and formulating the cure amount for a leaner end product. But if you're that concerned about your caloric intake, why are you even eating bacon? After we sliced it, we put it on the scale to see what kind of weight loss the bacon had from the curing and smoking process. It's a little hard to see here, but it was 959 grams. That's a 95.9% yield and 100% delicious. Now we have two pounds and two ounces of bacon. We couldn't eat it all that night. Well, we could have, but we vacuum sealed a few portions to stick in the freezer for later. The bacon would easily stay good for a week in the refrigerator. We had breakfast for dinner that night and started a few strips and some of the end pieces in a cold cast iron skillet over medium heat. Once some of the fat started rendering out, we flipped it regularly until it was crispy on both sides. Apparently, I didn't clean the skillet very well after the last time it was used, so we ended up with some little crispy bits on the bacon. It still tasted amazing despite its visual flaws. We have some pigs that will be ready to butcher soon, and we plan on making a lot more bacon. How would you like to win a free pound of Riggin Farm bacon made from our pasture-raised pigs? We're having a contest where one lucky subscriber will get a pound of custom bacon. What's custom bacon, you ask? The winner will get to choose how they want their bacon. Smoked, unsmoked, plain, brown sugar, maple, peppered, Korean barbecue, or whatever flavor you can imagine. We might have to draw the line if you request gold leaf bacon or something else ridiculous. All you have to do is make sure you subscribe to our channel and share this video on your social media with the hashtag Rig and Farm. Once we hit a thousand subscribers, we'll pick one subscriber at random and then we'll contact you to find out what kind of bacon you want. We'll make it to your specifications and ship it directly to you. This is only open to US residents. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed learning how to make bacon and are excited at the possibility of winning some of the best bacon you'll ever have. We'll see you next time!